Poštovani gledatelji, dobar vam dan. Pratite emisiju Balkan u Evropi. Ja sam Ivana Dragičević. Ja sam Borjan Jovanovski. Gledate Balkan u Evropi. Ovoga puta posvećen izbjegličkoj krizi. A izbjeglička kriza čini se ostavila Evropu bez odgovora svakoga dana. Svjedoci smo slika poput ovih. S nama su danas i naši gosti. Tu je gospodin Sanel Huskić, Public Policy Analyst, recently focusing on migration and president of the new think tank called New Policies. You are really into this subject very much, so looking forward to talking to you today. I have honor to present uh, the only lady as our guest, Madam uh, uh, Loch Bichler Barbara, co-chair of the uh, Subcommittee for Human Rights. Uh, And with us we have Mr. Davor Ivo Stier. He is the chief coordinator of the EPP group, the largest uh, group in the European Parliament on the uh, issue of development policies. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you. So let's start with Sanel. Uh, Mr. Huskic, uh, could you please to start this program, could you uh, give us your assessment about what's happening right now in the Balkans? Hung Hungary uh, closed the border and uh, in the last 48 uh, hours, almost 6,000 refugees uh, are redirected towards Croatia. So what's the situation right now? Uh, you summed it up pretty much. As soon as one border is closed, the refugee will find another way. It's like a river, a river of people only. If you build a dam, they'll find a way to, to reach the final destination. So at the moment, we are seeing that the alternate route is being forged as we speak through Croatia. And it's going to be very interesting to see the numbers of the people in the uh, next days, because I believe they will gradually increase. Because we haven't seen the peak, considering how much people are still located in Serbia, Macedonia, even Greece, and potentially in, uh, in, in, in the other areas. We can even speak about the broader areas, such as North Africa and uh, Middle 30. East. Which, and the numbers go up to the millions. So the thing is that at the moment we are seeing just a part of the wave that will go on for, for quite a bit, some time. And the most unsettling thing is, as you uh, already mentioned, is that the European Union as, the, as entity has not came up with a proper response yet. So what we are seeing now are ad hoc happenings of the individual states. Hungary is resorting to wall building. Uh, Austria and Germany are suspending Schengen's. Uh, Spain is uh, altering its uh, uh, laws on the asylum. So it goes on and it goes on. What we need at the moment is a very uh, 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 clear and organized response from the United Europe. Uh, that's, that's exactly the point. I have a question for both of you because European Parliament had voted for the extension, if I may say, of the, of the quota system. Uh, so 
is this possible? We see how many people voted for, how many voted against, how many people were abstained. But basically, probably the European Council will be held uh, uh, Tuesday. Uh, is this united European response possible at this moment, considering the scenes we are, we are witnessing? Well, I guess the European response is the only alternative that we really have. And at this, this uh, refugee crisis, if it's proven something, is that without the European response, we are seeing, unfortunately, inadequate responses. What we are seeing, these images that we were portraying, are just symptoms of the lack of uh, a common European response. And that's why the European Parliament is taking that part of the leadership in saying we really need uh, a mandatory quota system. Them. We really want to support what the Commission uh, was proposing and we are expecting now the Member States at the Council uh, to vote for it, to approve it uh, uh, with a qualified majority. We know that there are several Member States that are not inclined to do that, that have been blocking so far this uh, decision, but this is a necessary decision. We really, This is the moment where we really need to prove that uh, we are able to cope with this, of course to protect uh, uh, the, the, the citizens. Uh, uh, to, to, to give protection also to those who are uh, in need. This is, this is uh, uh, very important to say. Uh, we need to manage our borders, but we cannot do it if we uh, are going with uh, member states uh, uh, with their own uh, response that is not coordinated. We really need uh, here a common European uh, answer to this uh, crisis as an emergency measure. And then we also, of course, need to address the root causes. And here is where the development policy, but also our foreign security policy should uh, be uh, far more active. But at this moment, we have both things going on. Deadlock of Euro Europe, European institutions, European uh, decision-making process. We have huge humanitarian crisis all over Europe, uh, from Greece to Germany and North. Uh, and we need fast response for the latter one. Uh, so how can this be dealt with? Well, first let me extend, and I'm not from uh, the region, I'm from Germany. In the German news this morning, I heard a Serbian police, uh, how they were handling uh, an aggressive situation at the Serbian-Hungarian border, and they did it with intelligence and peaceful means, and calmed down the crowd. So congratulations and thank you to the Serbian police. And second, I would like to thank also the Croatian government by announcing yesterday that they facilitate the refugees who are in great need to come to the European Union, that they will not select them according to their religion or according to the skin color. So I think these are very positive, very pro-European and civilized reactions of a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, but already we have a problem. And if I may say mm -hmm. so, the pictures you just show that a member state of the European Union neglects the basic principles of humanitarian aid cannot be accepted. It is another thing to criticize the Dublin system, which we criticize alike. This Dublin system to sending back the refugees where they entered the European first didn't work. It didn't work before uh, years, yeah, and we have to profoundly reform this. Unfortunately, this is not one of the suggestions which uh, Mr. Juncker put forward or are discussed. Now, in addition, we have a, a situation where two weeks ago the German Conservative Chancellor made a very humane decision by accepting those people who are extremely exhausted to take them in. And I think we have the capacity all of us in the European Union, to give the first aid and humanitarian aid to those uh, people. If our region cannot do this, which region in the world should do that? Mm. And what is relevant, I would say, for your region now is we had uh, the day before yesterday a discussion with the UNHCR uh, chief executive, Guterres, who was very disappointed that the ministers of interior postponed their meeting to October, couldn't agree even on the lousy number of 120,000 people uh, to, uh, to, uh, be, uh, to, uh, to propose that they are responsible for them and how to distribute them. And he says now, you cross the border as a reaction, what will happen to Serbia? And what we see now, which I think is a good thing, at least, it's a, it's a bad in politics, but at least for the first aid, we are going to reshift the budgets of the European Union. 
We had a session this morning where we looked into our financial instruments and clearly it says that the countries of the Western Balkans and Serbia must have an immediate financial support to do the basic things. But it, uh, it, it looks like that Western Balkans is not so big problem, having in mind the attitude of the, of the of hung, uh, uh, Hungarian government. Uh, everybody, almost everybody here in the European Parliament are, are, is, are criticizing uh, attitude of, of, and decision taken by the uh, or Orban's government. Do you have any idea how to ag address concretely this pro problem? Because we are talking about the member states well, uh, that is uh, in the I system, mean, For of example, course. to invite Mr. Orban in your subcommittee for human rights and to discuss some of the basic well, issues, because I think, uh, Mr. we are Orban, talking about the basic values. I think Mr. Orban would already feel insulted to be invited to a subcommittee and not to the main committee, because the experience we have with the president of Hungary in the past was also his attitude that uh, how he respects or not respects uh, the functioning of the European Parliament. Usually when he was criticized by being very um, uh, neglectant to the right of the free media or how he treated uh, the Roma ethnic minority at home and whenever there was criticism from the European side, being at the Parliament or the Commission, and at one point he was called to come to the European uh, Parliament, you should uh, look at his attitude. When he came home he basically reported back home that he defended the interest of the Hungarian people and was not addressing the subject we are discussing so far to, hung uh, to Hungary but the problem we have in the European Commission is that if a member state develops regressive yeah, does not value the, the, the how can I say, the, the values we have or the r rules, we don't have a mechanism, for example, to start a process of disinviting a country. We had only but one... at least to expose. Let for me. example, what about, what, what about the situation within your family? You, I'm talking yes. about the European uh, People Party. I mean, we, you are talking... Uh, 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 Any time about the European values, that's in the sure. core of the, your family, of course. Uh, so... Look, Have look, you any intention we, to we, invite him or to expose we, we, we him publicly definitely, about We definitely what, what can say the following, uh, and, and this is uh, uh, something we can uh, agree in uh, viewing or in disagreeing in the way the uh, uh, government of Viktor Orban has been handling uh, this situation. But we also need to admit that uh, uh, every time he was invited to the European Parliament, he came actually to the Parliament and he really debated with the parliamentarians. Uh, uh, I think that what we are seeing here is actually the symptoms of the lack of European leadership. I'm not saying that uh, uh, this is something cannot be solved. I hope it will be uh, on uh, the council meeting on the 22nd of, of September. Uh, and this is exactly the way we should proceed with the council no, decision. Say, but but what, I, what I'm saying, no, but what I'm saying Merkel, is, which is not absolutely, uh, and we are really proud. Of, is, we are really proud about what Angela Merkel said. We are really proud of, about what uh, President Juncker said at the parliament. I think he said very clearly, from a Christian democratic perspective, we are here to be and to give a hand to those who are in need, regardless if they are Christians, if they are Muslims, or if they have no religion, if they are in need, we really need to do that. Uh, look, I think this is something that we uh, should not put in contradiction also in managing well, of course, our borders. These two things should not be put one against the other. We, we need to do both things at the same time. And here is the challenge. But I'm sure that Europe has the ability to cope with that challenge if we are united. I think if we want to be critical, the best criticism uh, was, in my view, said by President Juncker. He said, we are in a European Union where we are seeing, actually, uh, that we are lacking union. And we are lacking, we have if this you want, a European we'll spirit. Remind you this later. is exactly yeah. the way we Sounds need pregnant. to proceed now. Okay. More European values and more union in the European Union. If we come up with the common solution, and I think that the first step is to pass this in the Council on the 22nd of September, we will be on the right track finally to start to show the leadership that is needed to manage the situation. And how to be operative at uh, all in if, this construction? If I can uh, just come back on, on two points. First, uh, it's good that the uh, European Union is actually thinking about Western Balkans, if nothing else, in terms of money, if nothing else. But that's not enough. 
the capacities of the Western Balkan countries to actually deal and cope with this kind of calamity, if you will, are limited, as we all know. That's the first point. The second point is regarding Mr. Orban. I completely agree. The lack of European leadership actually pushed these countries to actually resort to different kind of things. But that does not sanction Hungary and Mr. Orban from being what he is at the moment. Hungary is doing things like that, that are unspeakable in European terms. And the biggest problem at the moment is not will he come or will he not come. The biggest problem that the European Union is facing at the moment is to actually demystify, and you can do it right away, who these people are, refugees. They're not terrorists. That's the thing. And everybody, including Hungary, has a responsibility to actually do this. The history will judge Hungary for what they're doing at the moment. I have no doubt legal, about that. And we have but a moral obligation towards the refugees. That That's Europe true. It does should be said. Okay, but himself. to defend the Christianity in this way, <laughs> defending the values of Christianity means solidarity also. But, but Orban is saying, I am defending Christianity, uh, but not defending, allowing them to enter. Look, uh, if, if we are going to uh, go to some authority to interpret what is Christianity, I would prefer to follow Pope Francis. Okay, yeah. well, so. That's what, that's what yeah. he said. If, yeah, the differentiation. So if I so uh, how can so European institutions you kind of do something about him? Well, you I also think um, it is difficult, but we have to act uh, in a more coherent way. Yeah, we should not let that go if the pictures uh, are gone. Um, secondly, I have to say it is not only the Hungarian president who failed miserably the European values because the whole, and there was unity actually, mm -hmm. unity in the European Union that our external borders are being completely blocked. The fortress Europe was really closed before 2011, if we look to the Mediterranean. And instead of analyzing in a logical way that the wars who began um, in the Arab world and the transformation processes in our neighborhood led to many re uh, ref uh, refugees and misery, we did not change the policy, altogether not. And what we had at the, in the, let's say, half a year ago, the border of the European Union was the most deadly border in the world. So we all together failed uh, our own values and the universal values. And now with this drama on our doorstep, with so many uh, people from Syria coming, there is a chance, and Juncker has made the plan, that we have fundamentally changed our attitude. And that is a good chance, I would say. Uh, but what I see on the political level now is that we have disunity in changing this fundamental understanding of how we should deal with uh, politics. And we are just at the beginning. And as I said again, with the money, don't play it uh, so uh, small because there are so many people that uh, I think it is absolutely the European obligation to give more money for the humanitarian needs. It's not more money, it's about the more example. Because, you know, when, no, but, uh, when, when, when some people, the politicians in Macedonia, are looking what is happening in Hungary, in Hungary, they're saying that's your Europe. Why, why we, what, what to follow? No, I mean, but what now, are the values to follow? So it's a, a very bad example coming from Europe, from within Europe. Yes, but just let me finish. I don't know if so, I expressed myself clear enough. I think the money is needed in big portions because the humanitarian crisis is growing in Serbia because they are blocked there. Mm -hmm. And we have to uh, actually give basics like hygienic articles, water, the winter is coming. And if also more people are coming in other West Balkan countries and in Greece, we are not prepared at the moment. And when we had the debate with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, he made this very drastically clear. Second term is also that we have to establish better uh, uh, systems to organize the refugees to come in a more systematic way to register them that they get uh, um, how can I say help to be distributed then in the different countries and we have uh, we have not <laughs> achieved uh, this week that the governments uh, contributed um, to the hundred and uh, to take in parts of the hundred twenty thousand refugees so we only agreed not to stop uh, talking 
talking about it. We postponed the decision to October. So it is important to convince the leadership of Europe in the respective countries that they have really an obligation. About the leadership, okay, yeah. And just before we continue, uh, just one sentence and then we will hear some points of Mr. Juncker's uh, State of the Union address. Please. Yeah, the, the, the thing with, with Europe is that they have no alternative. They have to evenly pick up a tab for this crisis. There is no way of some countries flaking out. Yeah, they're not opting out. What, it, yeah. You are in, you are out, all in, all out. So there is no way that, there is no alternative. The alternative is actually very grim, if you think about it. If Europe, for some reason, does not reach a unity at this meeting on uh, 22nd, the aftermath is of grave consequences. Uh, first of all, toward the people that are actually fleeing. But toward the West Balkan countries is, is even maybe greater in the long term. Because these people will stop at the wall, which will be at the European Union. They have no place to go. They'll stay for a prolonged period of time trying to find alternative ways, maybe across the Caucasus and Ukraine and B Baltic Sea. Like, they will find a way. But what I'm trying to say, for example, Bosnia and Herzegovina cannot deal with this. We all know this. Like, it would not take months, it would take weeks for Bosnia to cave in. Mm -hmm. Does the European Union want to, to actually uh, relive some uh, very recent history in the Balkans? I think not. So the, I don't know, I know the Europe is very slow, but the crisis is very quick. The uh, solution is right there. It's not even very difficult. Doesn't matter what Visegrad group wants. It's, it's above them at, at this point of time. They basically have to go and see the reason. Later on, Europe will have to uh, undo the damage for a long time. The damage is already done. It's not just Hungary, it's European Union. At the moment, the, 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 the message, I mean the picture, the, the, the perception of Europe is angry white man, very old, shotgun in one hand, Bible in the other hand, protecting his lavish villa of some eight bedrooms, cellars and fridge full of food, while the neighbor is passing by asking to sleep over in a barn and have a glass of water and maybe a sandwich. Okay. So it's going to take I mean, a long, long time for, for Europe actually to redeem itself from this. So that's why I think, as you mentioned, that Hungary, maybe it cannot be sanctioned as a country, but po political parties that are actually governing the country definitely can be and should be. Just before we continue, just to see the, some key points of the State of the Union address of Mr. Jean-Claude Juncker. The European Union is not in a good state. It fehlt an Europa in this European Union. And it fehlt an Union in this European Union. This is not a time to take fright. It's a time of humanity and of human dignity. We Europeans, all of us, I thought before the interruption, all of us, we should remember well that Europe is a continent where nearly everyone has at one time been a refugee. We are not talking about 40,000, we are not talking about 120,000, it's 160,000. That's the number Europeans have to take in charge and have to take in their arms. And I really hope that this time everyone will be on board. No poems, no rhetorics. Action is what is needed for the time being. Over time, migration must change from a problem to be tackled to a well-managed resource. To this end, the Commission will come forward with a well-designed legal migration package in early 2016. This is highly important. Migration has to be legalized. Evo, truly small. We heard the main key points of Mr. Juncker's speech. Uh, we have the quota system, 
and we have a large number of people who are here in Europe which are not in the quota system but are here to stay because they don't have uh, anywhere to go. So if the quota system is going to be voted on Tuesday, uh, how fast this can be implemented and how well states are prepared at all, for example, Croatia is the newest EU member, non-Schengen country, to accept thousand plus people, plus deal with this what we saw because in the less than 48 hours there are more than 5,000 people entered Croatia. Uh, this should be and can be uh, implemented actually very soon if the decision is uh, taken and I really look forward uh, to it. I think that it's uh, again a question where we are now dealing with this uh, emergency about the refugees. Uh, it can be uh, dealt effectively only if we are together. We are all together in this boat uh, and only with this common position and answer we can succeed. Uh, of course, I am not for building new walls in Europe, but I also against uh, finger pointing because uh, that will not be uh, the solution. We need now to come together and to implement that decision. That's first of all. Uh, we need to uh, really show that humanity. Of course, we are aware that, uh, for example, Croatia alone cannot solve this problem. This should be also clear to everybody. Hungary alone cannot do it. Germany alone cannot do it. We need to do it together. This is very important to, to understand. Uh, and also, we are then addressing the question of the refugee crisis here. But the migration flows is a process that is, uh, is, is going to take a very, very long time. Because we need to be aware of that. We are just 7% of the global population. In our borders, we have a very volatile situation, uh, yeah, wars, violence, dictatorships, and extreme poverty. So, uh, and we have really a booming population in Africa that will be, by 30 years, 25% uh, of the global population. We need to address these issues, and the development policy here is part of the solution. And I'm, I'm glad that part of the package that was announced uh, by President Juncker was this emergency trust fund for Africa of 1.8 billion euros, uh, uh, in addition to the fund that we we have for Syria. Now, the question is, we have these funds, but we also need these funds not to be drawn only from the European budget. We need the member states uh, also to, to contribute to it. Uh, but how to deal with a uh, situation, because European Union announced in its plan that uh, it need to establish so-called hotspots very fast, Turkey, Jordan, Italy, Greece as entry points and probably two countries of the Western Balkans, Serbia and Macedonia. But none of them can deal with it themselves. You've mentioned the situation in Serbia and Macedonia. So uh, how fast can Europe do this, if not to face this kind of crisis, please? If I may. Um, you see, Mr. Juncker presented a good package and he gave a very emotional and powerful speech reminding us of our history. And Europe in history is not an old man with a Bible. <laughs> it's the historical experience that the separation the from church and state was central for us to flourish and develop. <laughs> That's also the represent. And we are very colorful. We have different religions. We have a huge population who is not religious at all. Yeah, but you also so, have ghettos in Europe. We, look, we saw what happened in France, we, in Britain, Yes, but it's not uh, because of that. Of course, we have right extremism. We have racists and we have to fight them. If they commit crimes, it's a crime. It's not taken out of concern when, when they burn uh, uh, refugee homes. We have to fight them by the state. This is a criminal offense. Now, if we look at the package Juncker has presented, the logic of being completely different is not there in all the points. We still, with the plans to create hotspots, we don't know exactly what they should do. If they are there only to register, okay and also to inform in future what kind of legal migration opportunities for labor migration we have. But if the intention is to outsource the asylum procedures from inside Europe with our standards to protect the right of the refugees to the world outside the EU, I would completely disagree with this because we have really a good standards according to the Geneva Convention and other states don't have this. And there are plans, for example, to open such hotspots also in Niger 
or in Morocco. And then if you, if you measure what rights does the refugee have in Morocco, if they go there, what kind of system, what judicial system they have. Many of those countries have not even ratified the Geneva Convention. So I think we as politicians who are in favor of the rights of refugees, and not only see them as a threat to all of our, our achievements, uh, we have really to uh, focus that we change even more in this historical moment, this wrong um, policy of a fortress Europe. And maybe that is worthwhile to discuss in another uh, okay. uh, debate we are, we are here, but we have to look too, into Too much that. theoretically and hypothetically. May I ask you, what is going to happen if there is no decision for the quota? Uh, Once a Council of Ministers failed, there is a new. There will be new attempt tomorrow or, t or Tuesday. What what is going to happen if there is no? There is no decision? alternative to actually success. But, so what are the consequences? The consequences on the, the Europe, on the ground in the region. If I if I may, the there, Europe basically does not have the alternative to quota system at the moment. This is the quickest way to actually deal with this crisis. Uh, Europe, Europe has a variety of migration policies and it's going to, to, toward the common asylum system and many others. Mm -hmm. And it will eventually have a very good system. The system is already good, but it's not uh, calibrated for this type of things. So it will change. With these hotspots, uh, it's actually very good to see that Europe is actually doing this in a very rapid manner and it's actually learning as doing but they know they have to do something. So it's very good. But alternative to failure of this meeting uh, is none. That's the thing. Because Europe, as we can see now, states are suspending Schengen's again. They are building the borders. They are changing the legislatures. They are completely disregarding the basic conventions on uh, human rights and many other things. So the Europe, what we are seeing is not becoming, it's becoming less and less Europe, as you as, 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 yeah, as Commissioner sorry. said. Yeah. And that's with Europe. Europe will disintegrate, basically, in the long run. More so than, than it will, this crisis will damage Europe more than the financial crisis or the referendum in the uh, UK. That's f with Europe. The consequences on the Balkan, I will again say, would be grave. Because these people will linger in a Western Balkan region, waiting to find the alternative passages to over the Western Europe. And, and let me make this very clear. They will find the way toward the West Europe. I was a refugee at one point in my life. And I know what's the desperation that actually drives you. And Europe can accommodate. This is a, a, a trivial number of the people compared to the combined population of European Union. This is actually statistically looking a, 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 a a mar marginal amount. If you have 500 million people living in the European Union and you have half a million, not even, refugees at this point, it's really, Europe can absorb this. But can it absorb properly? I agree, the system is there and they can take uh, this amount of people relatively very quickly. But will they integrate after what they've been through in a proper way? They are, I'm saying they are not the terrorists at this moment. Like there are people fleeing, but well, the Mediterranean passage, the Mediterranean passage, the rain, the cold, the tear gas, the pol riot police, the hunger, the, the, I mean, these people will be changed. But so for the Europe yeah. is, it's basically, That's you will it. reap what you sow. So it's better basically. to stick to the core values and accept these people and of course, redistribute them because there is not too many. Europe can actually take this. It's but not no, even it's a serious we, we need your comment. It you is think not, not a serious politics. Uh, I just want to uh, underline yeah, okay. this. This is European politics. Okay. Do, do you Nothing think that else. The, uh, there will be an agreement about the quota? Do you think? And, do you have any idea why, why, why this is a, a and many of uh, the European country? Don't want to accept. Uh, I think it will be a decision by a yeah. qualified majority, majority, and that will be enough. And, and I hope you know um, what you said is basically known, because it's a, a logical politics everybody should do. Yeah, but it but seems if uh -huh. the political leadership of certain governments is ready <laughs> to shift the whole mentality, that's the question. Of course, we can absorb. 
uh, it's not only Germany because we have good economic figures, but we can easily, I would oh, yeah. say, if we want. But if there is not a fundamental switch in the attitude, how we deal with uh, people coming from abroad, and if we continue to see everybody who is a refugee or a stranger is a threat, we cannot. And uh, therefore, I think this needs a little bit time. Yeah, and uh, but I also I would agree with you. I have a great hope. Uh, I'm from the Green Party, not from the Conservatives, but um, that uh, our uh, leadership at the moment, the German leadership, is very influential usually uh, in the European Union, and that she can explain uh, properly that solidarity is not a one-way. Uh, street, then if, gov if we are together in a union, so we have to give and to take. And those who say we don't want to be part of this union, who cares about refugees, they also have then to say, face the answer that we don't care about your problem. That's a question. You Do you think that the third, to to third majority decision is going to resolve what she's saying? Well, I think that we will have the, quali uh, the, the, the qualified majority, I hope so, in, at the council meeting, and that the, the decision will be approved, it will be mandatory. Uh, of course, we do have uh, countries that have from the past and uh, opt out, like uh, the UK. I think uh, it will be important also for the UK to show solidarity here, but that's, of course, another question, but let's mention that as well. Uh, in any case, I think that the decision will be taken that countries like Croatia should not be uh, left alone. Uh, besides this, there's a larger issue that is war in Syria that's been going on too long for now. It created this largest humanitarian crisis, Libya situation. Yeah. So how to tackle it uh, concerning the fact that Europe still doesn't have its own external uh, policy in that sense to react and yeah. security policy, if we may say, in this well, uh, I mean that we can agree that European Union for a long time actually took a piggyback ride on uh, United States uh, foreign policy. And uh, I think that Europe should honestly reconsider that some other possible avenues where they can forge a common foreign policy, uh, not only enlargement, but I think that actually mobility uh, it should be one of the EU's foreign policy uh, cornerstones. After all, the European Union is what it is due to, to actual free mobility. And I think that the foreign policy and the lack of it in, a, in a countries of Maghreb, North Africa and, and Middle East is actually what's happening at the moment. I mean, the European Union is for a long time trying to... to to actually not acknowledge what you mentioned, that we are a fraction of population of this planet, not even 10%. And the demographics are changing. The Africa will, in the uh, next 40 years, double its population to 2.5 billion. The Asia is rapidly growing, while the Europe is really not growing. So the European foreign policy should acknowledge these facts of life. If we want to stay, I mean, the Europe, in whole, and I'm including a Western Balkan, because it is a Euro. If we want to stay what we have been, and I, I want to uh, underline that we are not an uh, uh, old guy with a shotgun and a Bible, but we are actually showing the world that we might actually be this. I think the European Union should acknowledge and focus its foreign policy to its immediate neighborhood. And I'm not uh, just saying Western Balkan, but the North yeah. Africa and not just for a sake of these people, but for a sake of European Union, the people that actually live in European Union. But um, look, look, Michael, you're also a member of the uh, foreign uh, committee uh, oh. in the European uh, Parliament. Do you can we ex expect a more engagement of you in the re in the process of resolution of the problem in Syria? Yes, you can, and not only in Syria. And if you look into the details, already see, uh, the European Union is in close cooperation with uh, UN coordinator De Mistura to try at least to give in certain cities a ceasefire like Aleppo and then start with humanitarian corridors. But the question you raised, do we, have, uh, do we miss something, let's say it in a nutshell, do we have to have a European army to solve the problem quicker? I think it is... Uh, the wrong analysis. Mm -hmm. A military intervention can only uh, stop uh, something in one place. It cannot solve a problem like this.
Can we partner? And so it cannot. And I think the strength, in my view, of the European Union lies in being a soft power who can bring people together and who can broker um, developments. And the other example you gave in Libya, Libya was in, and is to a great extent in chaos. But uh, since last year in December, a, a European diplomat before, Mr. Leon, now is the coordinator for the United Nations, and they step by step uh, try to form a government of national unity so there can be a functioning state with the police, a border control. Mm -hmm. And there I think the EU can do more. But they are on, the, I think this point uh, we do quite uh, well. And I think uh, also to uh, listen to what uh, Mogherini, our so called foreign minister, said rightly if we fail so miserably to uh, help the refugees in the basics of humanitarian need, our whole existence and our reputation in the world as being something different. Europe um, is at stake. And I think all these uh, smaller countries who would disagree with this approach, they should think about what they would be if there is no European Union. What, who would care about Germany alone? Who would care about um, uh, Hungary? None of our member states would be member of the G20 because we are alone very little states. But besides yeah. this, uh, can Russia Despite the, the, the sanctions and the issue with Ukraine, which is still there, uh, now on the side a, a little bit, but can Russia be the partner of the EU in the case of Syria? Look, uh, certainly that uh, you cannot ignore the role uh, of, of, of Russia, especially in, in Syria. Uh, but uh, I certainly see that it's good that we have uh, soft power and the EU can be good at that. But I'm afraid that only with soft power we cannot defeat ISIS. And we need to defeat ISIS. So we need to say that clearly. Uh, whether they will that be with our allies uh, in the North Atlantic Alliance uh, or another format, uh, that's of course uh, something to be discussed. But we certainly need to, uh, to, to defeat I ISIS. Think. That is necessary. But what is also necessary is not to repeat the mistake that, that was done, in for Iraq. example, in Libya. Libya. So we ousted mm -hmm. uh, uh, the regime, which was an authoritarian regime of Gaddafi in Libya, yes, but then we left the country to the chaos. There was no development and reconstruction policy afterwards. The soft power was in existence. So now we are paying also the price for that mistake. Uh, we should be aware of that uh, in our foreign uh, and common foreign and security policy. But again, as, as I said, we need to, to face this challenge uh, of ISIS. I'm afraid cannot be defeated but only with soft power. All of our member do states are in NATO. So why do we need a double parallel? No, system? no, I'm not advocating yeah. no, no. A, a, have, a doubling you NATO. You have two more minutes uh, to just to, to, to finish. Sana. Could you please uh, give us your comment about the prejudice in all European countries, and the narrative, the, public narrative, the, the Western Balkans countries, <laughs> treating refugees as a terrorist, danger for Christianity, uh, secret army which will enter in Europe and then uh, will occupy Europe. So, uh, do you, do, do you, as, as a politic, as a member of the political party in your country, member of the European Parliament, do you think that it's uh, maybe a time to make a campaign in order to stop? those rumors which are no, and stop which this could be dangerous narrative. at some point motivated extreme rights yeah. groups. I think the, the principle is that you say if you have a closed society you are in security. Do you think, so not you, but if somebody says all the terrorists will come, do you think that they will come as refugees or do you think they will take the business class and come as business people or as uh, tourists? Either we live in a global society and, and we cannot hinder this. We have to fight terrorism with different means than with uh, a closed uh, society. And if, yeah, we that's have, absolutely yes, wrong. Mm -hmm. Clarity in concepts is national law. It's also a moral obligation. It's different from an economic migrant. Not that we should not address that issue, but these two categories are different. That should be said. Second, it's not about defending 
borders. We are not in, uh, this is not the language that should be used. We need to manage borders. That's quite different. Mr. Sarel, the crisis. I would uh, agree with my uh, colleagues. I'd like to say that the Europe is considering all trying to, to fix the problem. But I think they should also substantially, it's a good question, actually think about demystifying this narrative. And I think that Croatia now is in a historic uh, time and point of its existence to actually do what's right with these people because they are right there at this, as we speak in Croatia, they need protection, they need guidance. And Vreme I think that Croatia will step up to the plate. Uh, thank you really very much and uh, keep up your good work in this cause. Uh, Poštovani gledatelji, pratili ste još jednu emisiju Balkanu Evropi. Srdeću pozdrav. Pozdrav.